Hello, everybody. Today, another beautiful sunny day here in New Zealand. And I have Angela Ardolino with me today. And of course, I'm very excited. So I start every show. I love chatting to people, especially when I'm going to learn some new stuff. Now, let me just introduce Angela to you. So Angela is a holistic pet expert. And yes, I'm reading her bio here. I'm not just, uh, this is not just off the top of my head. She's a holistic pet expert and educator who's been caring for animals for over 20 years. She owns and operates Fire Flake Farm, which is an animal rescue farm, as well as two locations of her natural pet salon and shop, Beautify the Beast. She's also the founder and formulator of CBD Dog Health, which offers high quality, all natural cannabis health and wellness products for pets. Your Natural Dog, which is an online marketplace for natural pet products, handpicked by trusted holistic vets and pet experts, and Myco Dog, which creates and produces high quality medicinal mushroom and adaptogen tinctures designed specifically for pets. Now, there's a little bit more I want to share with you that Angelina, uh, Ad Angela Ardolino was born and raised in Miami, Florida. And where's this? I wanted to share this with you. In 2015, Angela was diagnosed with rheumato rheumatoid arthritis and knew she needed to find alternatives to the toxic medications being offered to her. And after learning about the benefits of cannabis and experiencing the life-changing results firsthand, Angela set out to destigmatize medical cannabis and CBD oil so she could spread awareness around its holistic healing powers. And I know she's doing the same thing with mushrooms now. So there's a, a, a bit of an intro, Angela. You can fill in the gaps for us, but wonderful to have you on the show. Thank you for joining us. Over to you. You bet. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I mean, you, you pretty much said it. I lived a pretty natural lifestyle. And when I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, I was prescribed a medication that has been directly linked to lymphoma and yeah. was not interested in doing that. So I started looking for something that was more natural. And that's how I found cannabis, tried it. And not only did it relieve uh, my pain, my joint pain, but my stress and anxiety levels went down. And I didn't, I, I couldn't believe what a life changer it was and how simple it was simple it was that how easy it was to relieve the pain, but how difficult it was to get the actual medicine. Um, because this wow. is back in 2015, when it was still legal, illegal in the state that I lived in, and hemp was even still illegal in the country. So um, I was like, great. <laughs> what do I do now? Well, I became an advocate because I couldn't believe um, after I started looking to see what else it helped, how it was helping kids, um, and then I later learned how it worked with animals, which is when my passion is animals. And that's when I knew that's what I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, I sold my business, threw myself into the medical cannabis industry to learn all about it. I was invited in 2016 to the inaugural class at the University of Vermont School of Medicine for the study of medical cannabis for its biology and therapeutic uses. That's where I learned that animals had the same endocannabinoid system as we do. Um, they actually talk a lot about it because it, it just shows up more on animals. It makes more sense than it does even to us. Mm. So when I learned that, I was like, yep, that's where I'm going to concentrate. And 2016 in the United States, I could not find a product that was made specifically for pets. Cause of course wow. there's some things that need to be different. Um, they were usually human products that had other ingredients that were dangerous, um, yep. so that's when I was like, okay, I think I'm gonna have to formulate something. <laughs> so I had, I had some knowledge and, um, certain plants, other plants that had medicinal uh, benefits and I've, those medicines I've learned also have share some of the same compounds as cannabis and they're called adaptogens. And these group of plants and, uh, fungi, when you put more, than one together, they become really synergistic and they literally, you take them or your pet, you give them to your pet and they literally get into the body and adapt to what your body needs. Mm. Um, so that has just been my passion. And I've been able to, at my rescue farm, take animals that have nothing to lose. They've got cancer. They're 14 years old. The parent has tried, pet parents tried everything. I get them. I take them off their pharmaceuticals put them on, you know, a natural diet, usually a ketogenic diet, uh, raw uh, or freeze dried or lightly cooked. And 
mushrooms and cannabis. And it's just amazing what you can accomplish by natural medicine and supporting their own immune system. Wow. So much there, guys. Hey, now, I, 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 can you can you go back or tell me this? Can you give us some examples? Let's just dive straight into it. Because one of the things I love about giving dogs anything like the mushroom or the CBD is there's no such thing as the placebo effect happening. Because exactly. they, with the humans, so for those of you who aren't aware, or do you want to explain it? My my, Or shall I run through it quickly? The Basically, the dog yeah. doesn't know. Basically, the dog doesn't know that they're getting something which is meant to make them better. So when they get better, you know it's not the placebo. Right. They're is not lying your, to you. They're not <laughs> lying. Like if you give me a pill and say you'll probably feel better, I'm going to go, oh, yeah, I feel quite good now. But that's right. the placebo effect kicking in. With dogs, that cannot happen because you cannot actually say to your dog, this little mushroom is going to make your back bad, sore back or your back legs or the pain disappear. Has exactly. that been your experience? That that I yeah, mean, um, it's a lot of people. Well, the biggest problem is that because it's unregulated, yes. that most products don't have any any of the medicinal properties in it. They don't even have CBD in it, and if they do, they have so little that it really doesn't make a difference. Or it's an isolate or a broad spectrum product, so it's not a medicinal product. So a lot of times. <clears throat> You'll they'll go okay. I'll try it again, but how do I know it's working? And I'm so like, you're oh, you'll so you're talking. So let me get this. So let me sorry to jump in. So you're talking about CBD products for dogs. I'm talk when I say CBD products for dogs, I'm talking about full spectrum hemp extracts. Which what that means is CBD is just one of the compounds that's in it. CBD and THC are the two major yep. compounds in the plant. So all are the cannabis plant. And this is funny because in the United States, we've messed it all up and the definitions are all wrong. But in the United States, how it's defined is the cannabis plant, if it has more CBD in it, it therefore has less THC in it. It's defined as hemp. And if it has more THC, it therefore has less CBD in it and it's defined marijuana. Um, those aren't, of course, correct terms. Yeah, it's all over the shop. <laughs> it's all over. Nobody knows what anything means. But essentially to make it simplified is I want you to imagine a cannabis plant or a flower or even compare it to a lavender plant and flower. All the benefits, all the medicinal uh, compounds live in the flower. Yep. So all we do is take that flower when it's perfect, you know, where we want it and we extract the compounds that live in there. What happens usually in the human industry, that's how they make the human medicine and the rest of the plant, they go, Toss and it usually goes to the pet industry or broad spectrum. It's a lot like the food industry when you think about it. All the waste mm -hmm. goes there. There might be some medicinal compounds in it, but nothing like when you extract it from the flower. And that flower is not only CBD and THC, but 114 other cannabinoids that are like CBD and THC, along with terpenes, flavonoids, proteins, fatty acids. All of those compounds work together to make the medicine work. So, so you can't what, just take out one little piece and get the same effect. So what you're saying is there's so much goodness in the actual plant, the flower itself, and, and your basic your product is capturing it all, whereas because it's unregulated, a lot of these other manufacturers, it looks like it's CBD oil in the same sort of glass bottle, but it's very, very different is basically where you're coming from, which I totally understand because... I don't exactly. even know if you're aware. We have we have a CBD product ourselves. And so we've gone through the same journey of trying to capture the absolute best. So I'm totally with you. And and so can you explain how do people or what is it that's in your CBD product that allows people to kind of do their own research and go, okay, so this has got the good stuff in it. Well, um, the, the only thing that we have yep. here in the States is that we have a certificate of analysis so yes. in our products, which I don't have one with me, but we have a QR code that you take a picture. There's a batch number on the bottom of the bottle and you find that it takes you to that batch and shows you what's in the bottle and what's not in the bottle. So beautiful. you want to make sure it's full spectrum, meaning it has that CBD. You're seeing the other um, major cannabinoids like CBG, CBDA, and you want to make sure that little blip of THC is on there. And that literally will prove that it's a full spectrum product because you're seeing the multiple uh, cannabinoids. 
What it shows you also that's not in there is pesticides, herbicides, heavy metals, any uh, sol solvents that were used if, the, if they were in the extraction process, all that also shows up. So heavy metals, um, anything. Here in the United States, it's all grown under the farm bill, which is grown organic, but still that will show you everything. That's how you know you have a good product. And that's the only way that you'll know. Because even the when I started this in 2016, everyone that there were probably like 10 to 12 other people who were starting a product, you know, after I met them at an event, you know, all over the country, um, they've all been bought. So they're not even the same as they used to be. So I always say continue to always check your COAs. Yeah. Um, and if you don't find one on the site or you can't easily access it, move on to another brand. It should be completely yep. transparent because it's completely Ill, not regulated. So anybody can put anything in a bottle and call it anything. Yep. No, I totally hear you. Every batch has got to be checked, tested. You need to be able to know what's in there. I'm a vegetarian and it makes me laugh me too. because people, people, people say to us some chicken crisps and I'm like, yeah, why not? And somebody goes, well, I thought you were vegetarian. I said, mate, have a look. There's probably no chicken in this. And I have a look. The only thing that sometimes is in there is something called chicken powder that's vaguely connected to chickens. But quite often there's, there's got nothing to do with the chicken in that's chicken right. flavored crisps. And you kind of go, is it really got that bad? But the answer is yes. You gotta, you've really got to know what you're taking. And so the point here, guys, is that you know not all products are created equal. There really are some pretty weird ones. If you think about a solid gold coin and those kind of chocolate ones that you get in the Christmas stocking, it's that. They, it's that's that. right. That's so. right. And it's, you know, you can't say by price, you can't say by brand. The only thing is that certificate of analysis. And unfortunately, some people are now forging those or using old ones mm. or whatever. But um, that's the only way to regulate ourselves and be transparent. So the hemp industry in the United States is great. So we follow their guidelines because, of course, the pet industry doesn't even know what to do. They're yep. busy trying to figure out how to make a lot of money off of it. <laughs> so people don't realize the pet industry, the pet food industry is now worth more than the music industry. Wow. That puts, that gives you an idea of how much money is up for grabs here and why. I'll tell people, you, and you know why yeah, the music yeah. industry is probably more regulated than the pet food industry is. Yeah. Because but, the, one of the things is the mu the musicians can complain. The people can complain and say, we don't like this right. music. We don't, it's not Okay. Our little doggies, they can't speak. They can't speak. So it's up to people like us to go, this is not okay. This is a bad product. There's rubbish in it or there's nothing good in it. So this is what we're up against, guys. This is yeah. why This is why I love people like you. Come from the heart. Yeah. We're going, no, we're going to stand our ground. Well, it's funny because I get all asked all the time, how do I, what are your tips on picking a good product? The COA is number one. I actually added something to my list. What's and the that COA? Is COA the certi being? Certificate of analysis. Analysis, yep. So my something that I added to my list was go do your research. Um, mm. So when you find that company that has the COA, go see why that company exists. Because if you can't find the human behind the company, then I wouldn't do it because it's a corporation yep. and they're yep. not I they're not in concern. More. And and I that's what happens is that a company starts, a brand starts, they grow, they get a following, and then someone comes and buys them, and then yep. everything starts getting done cheaper. Yep. How do yep. we get? Well, what do you mean you pay that much? You get that from that farm in California. Well, because that farm is a biodynamic farm and my lavender plants are 15 years old and it makes the da-da-da. Uh, so that's what happens is that the everything starts getting cheaper and cheaper. Yeah. And the next thing you know, it's not anywhere near what it started with. So, yeah, look at who's behind it, why I they started it. I um the CBD product that we we promote is basically it's got my name on it. It's got oh, my, I said literally I good. will because it was the same thing as you. Yep. I'm sure. Just I I went looking. I was like I don't trust. I don't trust. Who's this? Who is it? They've bought a they've bought a person in a white lab coat to stand there making it look official. But who is this person? I cannot sell myself out. I will never sell myself out. Yeah, no. It's got my name on it. I, I vouch for it. I know what's in it and. Uh, I don't want to have a single dog on my hands where because we cheapened the product, same as you. So Well, people would get so like, why are you so upset about it? And I go, because if someone is going out and 
thinking that a a broad yes. spectrum. Do you know what a broad spectrum, yep. the difference yep. between? So yep. a broad spectrum product is not going to help your dog's seizures or cancer or Cushing, any of the elderly geriatric. Yep. I don't know what it helps, but I know it doesn't help any of that. So if someone goes out and buys a broad spectrum product thinking it's going to help their dog with those things and it doesn't, sometimes yep. it may make it worse because God knows what else they put in there. That pisses me off. That's when totally. I'm like, you are... You know, it's just like the prescription diets that get sold to our pets that aren't prescription. They're not based on science. They're not have anything to do. They're not going to really help your dog with that kidney disease. It's just a marketing ploy. And that I hate that. And it's not even the fact that these people have paid money to a company. It's not the money side for a lot of people. It's the fact that their dog is sick and dies yep. and didn't have to. Right. So this is where it's a it's a life and death thing we're dealing with here. It's it's not like did you have a nice holiday or not. It's did the did your imagine your dog dying because you gave it a product which was promoted as being this will help and actually it did nothing. Right. And there was a product over here which would have helped. Right. So yeah, that's why we're passionate. So awesome, awesome. Now, can you give us some examples before we move on to the mushrooms, which I'd really love to chat about? Can you give us some examples on your uh, rescue rescue farm? Yeah. Um, of some of the things that's because. It's just incredible, I think, how many different things people sometimes say. So what is CBD, you know, for animals, for dogs, what does it actually help with? I'm like, well, I know, I know. Which, you know, people go, how is that possible? That's not possible. And I'm like, well, that is why it's being kept from you. Because it will take the place of so many pharmaceutical drugs because it does help so many things. I also don't think people understand. Um, and I didn't either. Like when I, we first started, people would go, Hey, does it help with Cushing's disease? I didn't know what Cushing's disease is. So I literally would look it up and yes, it would. Why does it help Cushing's disease? Cause Cushing's disease is a tumor on the adrenal or the pituitary gland. And I know that cannabis will shrink tumors. So therefore it will help with Cushing's disease, but yeah. all disease is based in inflammation of something. So inflammation is when you have a deficiency in your endocannabinoid system. And if we can fill that deficiency with a plant or a mushroom or both, even better, it literally will, will take care of the problem. So endo, we don't know, nobody was taught about the endocannabinoid system, including our veterinarians and doctors. And it is the most important system in our body. It controls all the other systems in our body and is responsible for keeping our body at homeostasis. So uh, things like fibromyalgia, for instance, where they have no idea what that is, what causes it to, I believe it it is a severe um, deficiency or endocannabinoid system. It's literally phantom pain all over that you don't know what it's coming from. So Mm. it really does help everything. Or imagine having something that you're not sure and you take a full spectrum product, you know, it's only going to help. It's going to relieve the anxiety and stress over maybe not knowing or what the pain is from and relieve the pain at the same time. Um, So my experience, I've used it for since 2015 on everything you could possibly imagine and every animal you could possibly imagine. So any animal with a spinal cord, it will work on, has an endocannabinoid system. So fish, lizards, birds, we have some incredible success with birds. I have a bird rescue we work with in Hawaii who just the, the most amazing story, stopping seizures in birds which, wow. you know, I didn't even think about a bird just falls out of the sky or off its perch kind of thing. Um, but my biggest success uh, to date is my own dog, Nina, my Doberman, who at eight years old started to limp. And then it seemed like two weeks later, there was a little bump on her wrist. And it was what I feared the most. Uh, One in four dogs gets osteosarc large breed dogs gets osteosarcoma. So she got it in her wrist and I immediately went into action and I gave her, uh, we have a product for horses. So it's basically a lot stronger, uh, hemp extract. It's about 6,000 milligrams to 8,000 milligrams in a bottle. Um, so about 80 to hundred milligrams of full spectrum during the day. And then I went to the, uh, medical dispensary in Florida where I live and I got, RSO or FICO, which is full extract of cannabis oil. So the same thing, but out of the marijuana plant instead of out of the hemp plant, because I wanted more THC because I know that THC kills cancer. 
So that's what I did. And wow. I did not amputate. I did not do chemo. I did not do radio radiation. I uh, did a lot of research and I am now lucky enough to know at least 12 holistic veterinarians that I completely trust and go, Hey, this is what I'm doing. And they go, yeah, I, th I think, it, I think, I think you're onto something here. Um, most dogs, I, well, my Nina was given four to six months to live. Um, I at 22 months amputated her leg. So she was thriving until then I had to amputate the leg because the tumor was now blocking blood supply to her foot and formed a secondary tumor, which is like where the fluid was gathering. So it was getting uncomfortable. But other than that, no pharmaceutical for pain. Wow. No pharmaceutical for anything. She, everything was done holistic. And after uh, the amputation, we continued also to, uh, to treat her, but she is, we're pretty positive now, the longest living large breed dog who made it. So I just, wow. I actually literally just had to put her down last week. Oh. So, um, and I can't believe I'm able to talk about it. That's why I'm in New York. I needed to distract, <laughs> distract you then go see some family and uh, reconnect. But um, the do she's the longest living and she made it to 26 months. Um, most dogs don't make it. She's 10 years old, which is geriatric for a Doberman. And she ran around chasing bunnies to, you know, the last couple weeks. And it was pretty incredible. Um, and it's, that's like the third or fourth time that I've been able to extend a dog's life two or three years who was given, who had cancer and, you know, was on its deathbed that we literally brought back to life. So when you say to the people, how do you know it's working? Well, if it's for a calming situation, they're calm in 20 minutes. You got to find their dose. Everybody's dose is different. But if you're using a full spectrum hemp extract that has at least research has showed 12 nine to 12 milligrams of full spectrum, it is going to calm your dog down. You just have to find your dose. Keep doing it until then. Use your techniques. <laughs> um, but the uh, let's say it's arthritis or pain. Yeah. So what you see is your dog doing the things they couldn't do before, whether it was jump up on the couch or yep. go up the stairs, you see them start playing with their toys again. And you're like, Oh my God, they're happy. Yeah. They're pain. This, they are not suffering and, from pain. And this is not a placebo effect. No. Now I'm going to, I'm going to make you laugh here. I actually have to dash off for a quick pee. I've had too much tea oh. and coffee this morning. <laughs> Enjoy. I'll Karen, be right here waiting for yeah, you. Yeah. Karen record the room. Edit this bit out. <laughs> and you'd make you laugh. <laughs> I'll be right here waiting for you. You gotta laugh, eh? That's awesome. Is that a first for you? Um, Where the host of the podcast dashes off for a quick pee. Yeah, I think that one time it happened to me, but there was a like a technical <laughs> glitch. So like Lauren came back on, and I was like, "Oh, let me go check something." And I was me running to the bathroom. So. I, I, I we've had some big business meetings recently, tech technical ones with the other companies, and I've noticed we've had these three hour meetings, and we haven't had a pee break, and then for us, yeah, but everybody's camera went off for a few minutes, and they went uh -huh. on mute, and it's like I that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I did do right. one. I did do one one time where someone was walking around and didn't know their camera was on, and I was like paranoid the entire time. Yeah, she was gonna like sit down and 
take yeah. a pee or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yes. Right. I know exactly where we're at. I'm going to join it back up here. So are you ready? Three, yep. two, one. Yeah. So one of the things with um, the CBD oil I notice is that the variety of things it's helped with, literally dogs who are barking too much, who are overly aggressive. I'm not saying that is the solution, but in terms of bringing them down to a place where they're not quite so stressed, it gets yes. them under. And then, and then, like you say, my, you know, dogs jumping in the back of cars, soreness, even itching and scratching and mm -hmm. stressful situations. Like it, it helps with so much stuff. So before we go down too much more down the CBD, can you help people understand the difference between the CBD oil and the mushrooms? Yeah. So, so Myco, Myco dog. Yeah. Myco dog. So mushrooms are another, they belong to that, you know, classification of plants and fungi that are adaptogens. And when you put them together. So the great thing about medicinal mushrooms is they interact with the endocannabinoid system. So that is one of my favorite things about them. And they each have different compounds that do different things. So some of them are wonderful for the brain. Some are great for the lungs and heart. Um, and I'll, many of them have anti-cancer, anti-tumor properties in it. So cancer has 12 different pathways that it is able to work with to proliferate and grow and create a tumor. And when you combine cannabis and mushrooms together, and then you're doing the right diet, meaning you're not feeding that cancer with sugar, or glucose, or carbohydrates, or any of those things, a ketogenic diet, ha healthy fats and proteins, um, you literally can interact with all 12 of those pathways and keep cancer from metastasizing, spreading, uh, the tumors getting bigger, a lot of times not in osteosarcoma, but in other tumors, we've been able to shrink and get rid of them. So yeah. I've had uh, geriatric dogs with lymphoma, mast cell, uh, melanoma, uh, so many. We've, we've treated cancer. So these are clients, people who've used it over and over, but um, it is a incredible for cancer. Um, that is, I was able to keep my Doberman's cancer from spreading for 26 months just with all natural things. And that is unheard of. Um, even the vet that was helping me with her at the end said, you realize that the first thing we're taught is to cut that leg off. And that's not what you should do first. When you cut that main tumor off, it triggers the body. You've got to you got to immediately do something and treat and continue. And that's where it gets more difficult, especially with osteosarcoma, is that I'm realizing my treatment was easier because I had that, that leg on there. When it got more, the scariest is when I took off that main tumor. Cause it's almost like it, you took its home away. So now you're, so you're saying the, the body kind of, the tumor goes, well, where else can we put? And it starts looking for other places. Because almost, those cancers, we always have cancer cells. It's just a matter of keeping them behaved and not feeding them. And, you know, taking hemp and medicinal mushrooms will actually prevent them from spreading or creating a tumor. THC literally cuts off the blood supply to the tumors. And CBD makes your cells into what they call natural killer cells that literally load out in your body and find any rogue cells and kill them. Pretty cool. one, one, one of the biggest issues I think we have in the Western world in particular is we are always looking for this fast solution. Chop it off, chop it out. But it doesn't really deal with the why is the problem there. Right. And you can even take this back to my uh, my dog training method. The dog training I method that, that I promote, it's like people want to stop the dog barking or we'll just put an electric shock collar on the dog and put an electric voltage through its neck. Why is the dog uh, barking? What? Hang on. This is why all these trainers are like, oh, I'm the greatest dog trainer. I'll right. show you how to stop. That's well, mate, it's not that clever. It's like your child's crying. Just because you found a way of stopping your child crying doesn't naturally mean it was okay if it was a barbaric or a painful way of stopping the behavior. That's right. 
And there's... it's the same thing with with the dogs. Why is the dog why is the why is the dog's body creating these tumors? If you look at that, and that's what well, you're and dogs about. are a lot are not like us. Where when a tumor pops up, not bone cancer, that's different. But when a mm-hmm. tumor and just about anything pops up, that's a big signal something's wrong inside. Something's wrong internally. You don't just chop it off. It's because you haven't solved the problem. You of haven't why. solved you get the problem. And the tumor's and... going to go with the same problem. I'm going to. Yep. And remember, your uh, our veterinarians aren't taught anything about diet and nutrition. They're certainly not taught anything about the endocannabinoid system. So you they wonder why do... you wonder why they're not taught it. Mm-hmm. So they literally do not know what to do except offer amputation, removal of the tumor, chemotherapy, radiation. Which in in the United States, he, uh, uh, oncology is is new. You know, it's a new yeah. thing, and. Yeah. It doesn't work the same. And there's research here that says that, uh, you know, chemotherapy and radiation for a dog is is not even ethical because the dog can't say, I don't feel good. I need this. I hurt or whatever. Yep. So to me, let's do we've, we've got something that's all natural, both mushrooms and hemp that are going to help tremendously not only slow down, but keep them um, calm, happy and actually giving them a fighting chance. They call it, what I love is that they call chemotherapy palliative care. How is that palliative care? You, you're you sick, you're in pain, you don't want to eat. That's not comfortable. You know, no. we want them to be comfortable and happy and not stressed out. I th- and I think one of these with um, the CBD oil, the number of people who pretty much just say, hey, at the end of the day, I can see with my own eyes that my dog is happy. He's playing. Yep. He's eating again. He's running. He's jumping. He's he's living life. That's that's the proof. We've all had sick children or we know sick friends or we remember when when you're feeling good, you get up it out shows. of bed. Yep. It shows. It shows. And I love it for training. I mean – it is literally, it's almost kind of like how I use it for anything else, okay? It's going to stop the anxiety so that they can calm down and then learn. Um, mm. But you have to understand, I have a very busy groom shop. So I would see dogs with all kinds of problems. And let, we were <laughs> we were seeing dogs, you know, pandemic puppies who haven't been socialized, haven't had their nails clipped, haven't for a year or two years. And now they're coming into our groom shop. I, we literally go through a bottle of calm a, a week or calm yeah. tincture, but every time what we do is we trade them at the same time, we're yeah. going to calm you down. And then we're going to teach you not to be scared of the groomer anymore. Yeah. Not bark the entire time that you're waiting to get groomed or your bath, not bite the dryer when you're being. So literally we're like many little training them, <laughs> handing them back over. But the other thing is I would watch people come in and they'd been giving their dog some sort of pharmaceutical and the dog is passed out because it hates grooming. You can't groom a dog that can't stand up. It's going to, when it wakes up in the middle of a groom, it's going to be very angry and scared Mm. and freaked out. And I'd just be like, look, please don't do that anymore. I have this all natural. So now the dog comes in, learns it's not so scary. It's the most beautiful groom, enjoys the process. And then we hand them back over and they're like, oh. How'd you do that? Mm. We used we used an all natural product and we trained them in the in the meantime. It's the negative. There's no negative side effects really. That's what I love about this. Whereas you know, typical pharmaceutical pharmaceutical products is so and I don't think side effects. And I don't think people understand that. And no. there really is not not a, what I see like when I go into the Facebook groups for osteosarcoma and these cancers. They're like, what pain meds are you giving your dog? And they're not giving just one. They're giving like five. Mm. That's what's going to kill your dog. You've killed this its one, immune system. This one treats that, but it causes this. So this so one yes. treats that, but causes that. That treats that. And it's just this vicious cycle of before you know it, you're popping a handful of pills in your dog. Each thing's doing something, but causing another problem. It's just madness, to be it's, quite honest. It's awful. I've actually the, created an event, an online event that we're going to do September 22nd with like 10 holistic vets, because of course beautiful. I came to them and went, look, at, I just did this. I don't understand why. And they're like, I know I haven't written a prescription uh, for a medication in over 30 years. And I'm like, okay, well, we need to tell people this because- a lot, a lot of people don't have access to an integrative or a holistic vet. So they're just given a prescription and another one and another one and another one. So we feel like we have to tell everybody, no, you have choices and, 
every pharmaceutical is derived by something from nature. So why don't we get back to nature and, and use mm -hmm. that instead? Back to this nature. I tell you why, I'll, I'll say, back to nature. The problem with going back to nature, and, and you know this, and many people know this, and I'll step out because I'm ready to say, the problem with going back to the nature is the big pharmaceuticals can't control the product. They can't make all the money off exactly. it. Exactly. That is it, guys. And so we have two up, or three pharmaceutical drugs that are synthetic versions of THC or CBD. Mm -hmm. Not the real thing. Because and they any patent it, and then they can make lots of money off it. But until right. they can do that, they can't make, you know, put, put another way. Imagine we imagine for those of you who are kind of going, what, what do you mean? Pay? Imagine coconuts that grow on trees turned out to be the miracle cure for everything. Pharmaceutical companies cannot patent a coconut. Nope. And that's what it's like. With and right, just it's making it some, yeah, some cannabis thing. is called weed because it grows like a weed. So it literally is a very easy, you know, crop to grow. You literally can go, these strains help more, these cannabinoids and these profile help more so we can, you know, no, they're not going to let that happen. Look at all so, the side effects that could happen. Well, there are none. That's the right. whole point. It's it's really, you see what's happening. And, and, then people, why, and then people will go, oh, but there's no research on animals. And isn't it dangerous for dogs? They're, the, won't THC kill them? I'm like, nope, THC saved my dog. And all the research is done on animals. You have to be a little bit suspicious, to be honest. Once you start looking, you go, hang on. It's not all as it seems. There's that's something right. Strange. Who's controlling all of these rules at the top? But anyway, that's another story for mm -hmm. another day. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the time, and I'm thinking, right, where if people are wanting to know more, Angela, because you've got a number of different websites and stores, just give us it all because we can, people who are listening, we can give them a link. They can go directly, but also we'll have everything on our, on the podcast show notes. So tell us where to go if they want to f find out more about your, your mushrooms and. Great. And and my, stuff. my website, it's Angela Ardolino.com. My name, um, my dog is my mushroom tinctures, which I actually developed. So what happened is that I figured out what, for Nina's case, my Doberman with cancer, I figured out what mushrooms had the anti-cancer, anti-tumor, pro, you know, bone, pro immune system. And I put them together. And the, the products that I were getting the best were coming from China. And I was put, they were extract powders. So I'm putting like literally six to eight different mushrooms in her food. It was paste, whatever. So that's why I literally started looking for a tincture. So then I would find tinctures, but they had alcohol in them or something else. So then I'm like, really? Nobody? I'm going to have to make mushroom tinctures too? So I went ahead and made a mushroom tincture for Nina, which are my favorite um, cancer fighting ones. Then my uh, soul dog is a 15-year-old, about to turn 16-year-old, uh, miniature schnauzer who I created my ease tincture, which is uh, full spectrum frankincense and turmeric, which also are both adaptogens and share some of the same compounds, um, which is why turmeric is so amazing. It interacts Beautiful. with the endocannabinoid system and has beta carophyllene in it, just like cannabis does. So um, it is, that one is for, I lost two of my seniors. This is what's crazy is that I got rid of their cancer or Cushing's disease one of them was a black lab beagle mix. She was 16 and lot, you know, basically dragging her back legs, had MCT. She's running around and I lost two of them to dementia, to um, CCD, canine cognitive disorder, oh. um, where they literally forget how to eat and drink. Oh. So lion's mane is the best mushroom for brain health. It actually uh, has, makes your has neuroplasticity effects. It uh, regrows your telomeres, which is what makes us age and lose memory and whatever. So um, I made a tincture for the old dogs too, to help them with that. But that Beautiful. combined with cannabis, you really, that's all, that's all my old dogs get. So now everybody at my farm is senior or geriatric and they're all on cannabis and, and mushrooms Beautiful. and a diet. So so myco dog, can you spell it? M Y C O. M Y C O dog, and then C B D dog health is it. But if as far as education, I have all my dogs that I've treated's protocol up there, so you literally can see what I did if you wanted to see. And and then again, just find the products where you live and make sure you have that C O A. See who's behind it. 
Um, here in the United States, it has to be grown organically. I don't know over there, but make sure because both mushrooms and hemp are bioaccumulators, meaning they pull everything out of the air and earth. So they literally can clean the earth and air, but that's in there now. So you want to make sure you don't, that's why that COA will show you whether it has anything bad yeah. in it. So good stuff. I'm so glad to hear that you're using it and that, is it, is it completely legal there? No, here in New Zealand, we're a little bit backwards. You just, you know, it's uh, this is so ridiculous, but it is. I can't even sell my own product here in New Zealand. It's, yep, it's, I remember that. It's just <laughs> so ridiculous. It's And over in America, people are raving about it. All these lovely um, people oh, bring every me here day. in New Zealand and say, can we get your product? No, sorry, we're not allowed it. Why not? I well, know. Because the government. It is. Cause the it rules. is. It's difficult. And we got there. It took a while and we still, we're not allowed to market or advertise it. So it's still difficult, but we're getting there. And if you ever do get to a place, I mean, I remember I would come from one state to another just with so much because I had all these people with cancer and seizures and everything. But there's a reason that's being kept from us. And there is. Because it's so, such an incredible such thing. Powerful. So powerful. And they will lose. They will lose so much money when the truth comes out that actually this product's been here all along, but mm -hmm. they couldn't make money off it. And I'm happy to say that. Same I'm thing with hemp. Because, same thing hemp, with hemp. Exactly. Hemp, hemp fiber is stronger, more durable, antibacterial, antifungal. All these wonderful properties would put the cotton industry out of business. So therefore, it'll be a long time. Concrete it makes the best building materials. So it's literally like. Hmm. Wonder Why is this incredible plant put on this earth that grows like a weed that has all these incredible the seeds, the seeds, the the omegas and the seeds, the health benefits of just the hemp seed oil is amazing. So, yeah, I'm a big proponent, as you can tell. I, I love it. I love it. And I totally hear you because I just sometimes when I want to make myself happy, I look at all the testimonials from people who've used the um our yeah, product yeah, and it just makes me smile so before i forget if anybody's listening to this and you're wondering how you can get to the show notes obviously you can go to mycodog.com or you can go to the online dog trainer.com forward slash and i've put it under your natural dog and if they do want to attend the event it's an online event it's at yep. your natural dog.com slash event and yep. it's it's a free event if anybody wants to come on um and we literally will have myself and a couple other experts and holistic vets that'll be like, this is how you use chiropractic for pain relief. This is how you use herbs for cancer. This is how you, and they've been doing it for so long. So they love to be able to, that they're getting the attention because they've been doing, they've been preaching this for 30 years. Yep. There you go, guys. So that's pretty much it. I think that's a wrap. If you are listening to this, what I recommend you do is, Sooner rather than later, like just go home tonight or today or when you get into the office or wherever you go, when you get home and just check it out. Check out the, the websites that we've mentioned. Check out the products and get hold of one if your dog is needing some health, either physically or emotionally, if it's stressed, if it's barking too much, if it's scratching like crazy. and you've, Especially if you've tried all these other things and nothing's really working and you're spending a fortune because this stuff will actually be cheaper, won't have all the side effects. It just works. It's natural. And you'll become like one of those people who just goes, oh, my gosh, this is incredible. They weren't lying. No, we're not. It's true. It's just it's beautiful. I promise. It's the best stuff ever. I yep. take it every day. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm going to get more into the mushrooms. That's my thing. And that's for me personally. Is you know, my, Never mind the dogs. I just. Oh, heck I yeah. The mushrooms, is, the mushrooms are good. That's right. And and that's probably the biggest thing I've learned is what's good for us is good for them. It's and like with the mushrooms, five guys, foods, but ever the, other than that, five foods that they can't have other than that, what, what works for us works for them. They suffer from the same things we suffer from. Exactly. There's so many similarities between us. I think there's, I often think we, of course we're different. Of course we of are course. different, but there are so many similarities and I'll, you know. Yep. Yeah. Well, it has been so good having you on the, uh, the podcast, Angela. Thank you, Thank you for, for joining me. us. You last bet. words, last word to you. That was awesome. That was fun. Uh, it gives me a reason to come visit New Zealand. That sounds great. Lovely. <laughs> Bring some mushrooms. I will. <laughs> we'll go All mushroom right, hunting. We'll go. Yeah. Oh, yep. I'll show you a few places. A few. Okay, guys, you've been listening to another Doggy Dan podcast. 
Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. And as always, love your dog.